Welcome, everybody. It's amazing that this room is so full. Uh, my name is Philip. I'm from a company called Le Wagon. And as you might have noticed from the name Le Wagon, we're originally from Paris, France, and we're a coding bootcamp. We teach people how to code in just nine weeks. Uh, the results of that will be visible very, very shortly. And that's why, actually, I just wanted to say thank you very much for showing up. Uh, and a big round of applause to every one of you. And of course, especially to these 32 amazing individuals who have been with us for the last nine weeks. Thank you for coming. So, without further ado, uh, let us get started on the first pitch. And the first pitch is actually something I found incredibly interesting when they started. Uh, it's something rather close to my heart, and it's called Dog Runners. Give it up for John. Nala's a little shy. So, hello everyone. My name is John, and this is Nala. You probably met her uh, earlier. She was uh, running around and meeting everyone, enjoying everyone. So researchers tell us that most dogs don't get enough exercise. And this is particularly a problem in cities. Dog owners just don't have the time, sometimes the interest, and sometimes the uh, fitness level required to give dogs regular, vigorous exercise. And that's why uh, we found the site Dog Runners to be so helpful. They solve this problem. What they do is they provide a convenient, easy to use, real-time, uh, on-demand dog running service. So if we scroll up a little, we can see how it works. It really, it works just like Uber. For example, you first step is you request a runner and the system will look for runners in your area that are available. Uh, one of them, step two, will confirm the booking and start to make their way to you. Um, and step three, through the whole process from the very beginning to the very end, you can track the whole, uh, whole run and the whole event uh, on your smartphone or on your computer. So if we scroll up a little further, we can learn about the benefits of running. So, it goes beyond just the physical benefits. Actually, um, the uh, dogs usually have improved behavior, they sleep better, their mood improves, and this is true with Nala. She's more relaxed and um, in a much better mood if she gets regular exercise. So why don't we log in to my account and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. If you don't have an account, you can sign up quickly. It's just a, an email address and a, or a Facebook login. It's very fast. Once you're logged in, you come right to the My Dogs page, which is sort of the main dashboard of the site. I have two dogs. Victor is at home, and Nala is here in the office today. You can see on Nala's profile here that she just passed the 250-kilometer mark. Woo! And this is amazing, really. If you think about it, it's 250 kilometers of fitness, of exercise that she just wouldn't have gotten if we didn't find this site. So that's, we're really happy about that. If you click over on the runs tab, you can see uh, statistics about all of the runs, or we can zoom in and just see Nala's runs. So for example, uh, here she is actually well past 250 now. It looks like she's coming up on 300 kilometers, 42 runs at an average pace of 446, that's fast. Uh, she loves to run. She's about 50% greyhound and, you know, just has running in her blood. So if you scroll up uh, a little bit further, you can see details of the runs, the maps, and the other uh, statistics. So I tell you what, Nala's been great, but um, she's been kind of in the office all day, and she's ready to go for a run. So why don't we book her a run right now? Let's do uh, 30 minutes, and we'll choose an intense workout. And I'm going to leave the address where it is. It defaults to our current location, uh, which is fine in this case. And let's go ahead and see the summary. Now, I'm going to look this over carefully because as soon as I hit confirm booking, what happens is the system sends a text message to all 
of the runners in the area, and then one of them will have the opportunity to take the run. So I want to make sure everything looks right. The time window, it's uh, the next hour from now. The total price, 20 euros, that looks fair. So everything looks in order. Let's go ahead and confirm the booking. <clears throat> and now we're sort of on the, uh, on the run detail. I, I, I heard a ding. We have a couple of dog runners in the room. Uh, so that, that was the text they received. And um, you can see they're searching for a runner. So hopefully, yep, there we go. Johannes has accepted the run. That's great. Uh, you can see the status change to confirmed. And he should be here soon. It looks like he's going to arrive within 15 minutes, hopefully sooner. <laughs> Hi, Johannes. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Uh, I remember Nala, and hopefully she remembers me. So I'm going to take her for 30 minutes again, right? That sounds great. Thanks and very much. Off right here. Looks like you're busy, so I'm just going to go with her. That sounds great. Have a great run. Bye, Nala. <laughs> So that was easy. There we go. Uh, ah, shoot, I forgot to mention to Johannes, uh, you know, I'm going to be um, in a meeting when he gets back. So I'm just going to message him now and let him know that if I'm not here when he gets back, he can leave the dog with Philip. Philip knows Nala well, and uh, Nala will be very comfortable with him. So we're just going to go ahead and send him a quick message to that effect. All right, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. OK, that's taken care of. So let's scroll back up. And we can see the run has actually started now. Uh, so the, the, they, they're underway. And uh, one of the features that I like best about dog runners is you can actually see the run in progress with GPS, which is kind of fun. So you can, um, you know, keep tabs on their progress, you can see where they actually go, you know when they're coming back and so forth. So why don't we click on the button, map of the run, and see how they're doing. Okay, they're making some progress. It looks like, well, they just, uh, he's heading down Charlottenstrasse, if I'm saying that right. Uh, let's see, and yeah, okay, 8.4, not the fastest run ever. Maybe they got a little uh, <laughs> waylaid at the beginning there, but, uh, but there they go. So uh, yeah, terrific. They're gonna they're gonna be running for a while. So we're gonna let them do that. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you like dog runners. Thank you very much, John. Uh, I think that is something most dog owners. I have one, for example, can really identify with. Uh, I really almost never find the time. Uh, to do proper runs, so uh, I might actually start using this rather quickly. Um, all right, so we move on, actually, and move over from running and working out to eating out with our next idea. So from getting fit to getting fat, to summarize this, uh, with our next really cool product, Eat Up. Give it up for Wendy. Hi everyone, my name is Wendy. I moved to Berlin about a year ago from London. And the, I really love Berlin, it's a great city. But if there's one thing I need to complain about, it's that you can't really find good dim sum here. Um, and I've even gotten disparate to, uh, enough that I actually have to make my own at home. And some of my friends have really loved my dim sum and suggested that I open my own restaurant even. But, I don't have a background in the restaurant industry, so I don't have any idea how to even get started. Uh, luckily, a friend of mine, Jasmine, recently told me about a new platform called eatup.club, and it's basically a Kickstarter for pop-up restaurants. And for those of you who don't know what pop-ups are, they're basically a temporary restaurant, which allows you to basically test out a new food idea without taking on all the risk, because it's only for a temporary time, and you can get feedback very quickly from your guests. So, um, and also, I heard that eatup.club actually allows you to pre-sell your tickets, so that even further lowers your risk because you don't have to have to upfront all the costs yourself, which can cost upwards of a few hundred thousand euros of opening a restaurant. So let's check out the platform. 
So they have a pretty flashy website, I have to say. Um, and scrolling, scrolling, wow. There's some really cool campaigns on there already. And I love that you can actually keep track of how much people have pledged and they're stating their funding goals. And you can set a limit, cool. So I'm gonna get started and create my own pop-up. Uh, I'm gonna call it Wendy's Wicked Wontons. And it's gonna be Chinese and Fusion. And I've taken a picture of the dim sum that I made last weekend for friends. And it looks really professional because, you know, what can I say? <laughs> I'm that good, you know? Um, and I've spent 10 hours carefully crafting this very uh, important blurb. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then also I did some back of the envelope calculations and I think that it's probably gonna cost me about 10,000 euros to cover the costs of rent, ingredients, supplies, licensing for about a month of operations. And I'm also gonna um, charge probably around 20 euros per seat because let's be honest, it's a luxury dim sum. And I'm gonna set the deadline for a month from now on because let's be honest, if I don't raise the money by October, I'm probably not gonna open the pop-up in the middle of winter. So let's go ahead. Cool, that was really easy. So let's start funding my pop-up. And yeah, I guess that's really, yeah, that's all I have to do. And I just need to now share this with my network. I'm gonna share it on Facebook, on my newsfeed, so that all my friends and family can start supporting me. And oh, I see my friend Jasmine over there. I'm gonna go tell her about it. Hey, Jasmine. You should support um, my new pop-up on eatup.com. Hey, Wendy. Thanks so much for letting me know. So my name's Jasmine. Um, as Wendy said, we are good friends and you can ask anyone. We are always, always gabbing about Asian food and how hard it is to find in Berlin. So I'm gonna take her advice. I'm so glad that she actually used eatup.club, one of my favorite platforms. So I'm gonna go to her link that she posted on her Facebook and I'm gonna see what this is all about. Uh, so love her, love this platform. I am first introduced to this mouth-watering picture of some dim sum. So I see that she wants about 10,000 euros for a goal, pretty reasonable. Um, I read, uh, go down to the description, I read a little bit, and I see that she's going to make hagao, which is shrimp dumplings, and it's my ultimate favorite. I'm totally sold, gonna support my Asian sister, so I'm gonna go ahead and support this. <laughs> Um, and I can see that I can make a pledge without a reward, um, which is uh, able to donate without, you know, booking a seat. But I decide I'm going to book two seats, um, and I'm going to share, uh, going to show my boyfriend a real, authentic Chinese experience. So, going to go ahead and continue. I get a payment summary. I have uh, it, have a summary that shows me it's about two seats for about 40 euros, pretty reasonable. Um, and because I've used Eat Up uh, dot Club before, when I pay with credit card. Um, it usually has that information saved, and if not, um, I have a very conveniently generic uh, credit card that I can quickly <laughs> hop into, no problem. Uh, so I put in my information, Stripe makes it super easy um, and super quick, and I get, uh, that, I get my order confirmation. So it looks like I can share this on Facebook or Twitter, um, but you know what, I'm more interested in seeing what else eatup.club is all about, and I want to see what other people are doing. So I go to explore, love that I see Wendy's pop-up is already on the site, and I scroll down, love going whole cow, it's one of my favorites, just supported him yesterday. Um, and I scroll down, uh, look some good looking stuff. Uh, tapas, ooh, tapas look yummy. Always a fan of some, as much uh, little things that I can eat. Um, I see toasty for days, who doesn't love a good grilled cheese, you know? Um, but, I'm, you know, it's really cold outside, and I'm really in the mood for some Vietnamese, so I think maybe some pho would be pretty good. So I'm gonna go to the search bar, um, and gonna see if there's anyone who's doing pho. So, not your mama's bun, what's this? That doesn't sound like pho, but that looks like a good picture, so I'm sold. Wow, uh, let's see, we have this uh, person by Nung who's doing a pop-up. She looks pretty Vietnamese, so I think this is pretty authentic. <laughs> I read down, um, look like she has three days to go. Some more about this pop-up. You know what, the picture sold me. I'm gonna write a comment, I'll be like, you can bet your bun, I'm gonna be there. So, and so this is a way, great way to interact with uh, the other chefs. 
And then because I've been on this site before, I want to check how my other pop-ups are doing, the other pop-ups that I've supported. So I'm going to go to my profile and see, uh, look, I already see I have Wicked, uh, Wendy's Wicked Wontons, and I also have Will's Going Whole Cow. So I can see, uh, you know, how he's doing. It looks like um, he's almost halfway to his goal, and he just started his uh, pop-up two days ago. How crazy is that? So, uh, you know what? Uh, you guys can go to this site and you guys can support other foodie passions um, just like Will's and just like Wendy's on eatup.club. Damn, who else is hungry now? <laughs> yeah, I knew it. <laughs> All right. Um, so that was a really nice shift from working out to um getting some nice food but what do you do afterwards well if you're someone who's actually new in a city and who likes to work out but is unable to quickly find a gym we have just the right solution for you no take the stage Hey Nung, what's up? I'm working out. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do it at a gym with other people? Uh, I don't really want to spend a lot of money for a long-term membership and I'm only here for another week. Yeah, so why don't you use Fitflex? Fitflex? What is this? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's this new app and you can book drop-in classes at different gyms without having a membership. But that must be expensive, right? No. <laughs> Actually, it's not. Um, the gyms can op they normally don't sell out their classes, so they can just spontaneously put them on FitFlex and offer them for a discount price. So let me just show you how it's done. I'm just going to connect. Oh. So FitFlex. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to work out today but after nine weeks of coding, I really have to do something. So I'm just gonna check what FitFlex has to offer tomorrow. Ooh, pole dance. I heard some of you did some pole dance here, yeah? But 18 euros, nah, nah a little bit too expensive, I guess. Body and mind, mm, sounds boring. <laughs> oh, goat yoga. That sounds interesting. The 10 spots left. I'm just going to look at it. Yeah, so, ooh, it, apparently it's a trend. <laughs> and you have adorable goats just jumping on your back while you do yoga? <laughs> Come on, that's awesome. Oh, but it's tomorrow at 8. And I mean, we all want to go out party tonight because we achieved such great things. So 8 o'clock is not going to happen. But maybe, who knows, after the club, when I come home at 7, I can just go to goat yoga. So I'm just going to save it to my favorites. And maybe I'll go there tomorrow. Um, but as I said, tomorrow is kind of like, I feel like it's going to be a Netflix and chill day. Like, just, oh, no. <laughs> Just a chill day was serious. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to check what there is like a few days later. <laughs> and I actually really want to work out. So I feel like I want to do HIT, high intensity training. But I went there before and it was super, super intense and I couldn't get up to my apartment. Like walking the stairs was almost impossible. So I'm just going to pick like an intermediate level, like not too easy. Um, oh, power cardio, just nine euros. Looks good. I'm going to click it. And yeah, it's on Sunday at 1 p.m. That's a good time. I don't have anything else to do. It's also rated very well. Like, Should I do it? Does that sound good? Yeah? OK, I'm going to join. And it's pretty close by. It's just around the corner here. Yeah, I know. Have you seen Body Street? It's just out there. So nine euros, I'm going to pay. 
And thanks to Jasmine, my good friend. I've already got her convenient credit card. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Jasmine, for this course. <laughs> so yeah, I'm set for Power Cardio tomorrow, uh, on Sunday. And who knows, maybe if you guys want to check out FitFlex, we're going to see each other at Goat Yoga tomorrow morning at 8. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nung and Maren. That was very, very cool. Uh, personally, I think I'm going to start using that rather soon. I really should, at least. Um, up next, let's, let's do a little question game. Who here is not born in Berlin? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> well, I have good news for you, because if you want to discover Berlin and all the amazing sites and places it has to offer, Kaisa actually has the perfect website for you guys. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kaisa and I'm from Sweden and I really like to travel. But the problem is, a lot of times when I go traveling, I always end up in the same boring touristy spots and I actually don't even know what to see or what to do. So, yeah, actually I would rather just go traveling somewhere and experience something more local, something that is different to what I already know. And how can I solve this problem? Well, recently I stumbled upon this website, Follow Me, and yeah, let's check out how it works. So I can choose a city and browse different tours. And then when I pick a tour, uh, I can meet a local that will show me around the place where I'm going. So yeah, let's check that one out. Um, so I'm going to go to Berlin in a few weeks. Um, yeah, so let's search for Berlin. So as you can see, there's, well, there's a lot of different tours. And they all look really cool. Uh, it's really hard to decide. So. I want to see what kind of interests there are in Berlin. Okay, so I want to pick the alternative one because I heard that Berlin's really alternative and has some special things. So let's look at that. Okay, so, oh, techno culture. I want to see that one. Okay, yeah, so I heard techno is really big in Berlin or in Germany in general. So I can explore the nightlife in Berlin and see how locals party. But it's $15, it's a bit expensive for me. I'm a student and, I mean, techno is not really my thing, let's be honest. So, uh, yeah, I think I want to pick something that's a bit cheaper, so I'm willing to pay up to $10 if it's a really cool tour. And let's see for some new results. Uh, okay, so there's a Green Berlin tour, Metro tour, and... Oh, Berlin Secret Districts, I want to look at that one. Okay, so I get to see a lot of hidden spots in Berlin, check out the Berlin Wall, and actually, oh, there's also a bike tour, so I can go biking and be outside, I, I really like that. So, yeah, I want to see more details about this tour. Oh, cool, so that's my guide, Katrin, she's 28 years old and she's from Berlin, which is perfect, because I want to hang out with a local person. Um, so that's cool and oh yeah it's close to alexanderplatz and i don't know anything in berlin and alexanderplatz basically the only place i know so this is perfect uh and very cheap obviously uh and i'm gonna go with two of my friends so i'm gonna book for three people and i'll be in berlin on the 30th of september so yeah let's book at 11 o'clock so now I just send a booking request to Katrin, and I want to send her a nice message so that she can get to know me. Um, so I'm going to write, hi Katrin, and uh, I'm really looking forward to going on a tour with you. And yeah, we'll see. Hopefully she accepts my request. I don't know, maybe she's really popular. So let's send that. And now I just have to wait for her to accept my request. And great, she's already accepted it. Cool. So, yeah, I'm super excited for this. Oh, and she messaged me back as well. She's also excited. How great. So, I'm going to just write, thank you. And, um, yeah, now I can keep chatting to her and uh, get to know her before the tour, get some tips and insights. So, yeah, this is really cool. Um, 
Yeah, so this is our uh, core user story, and um, our plan is now to basically uh, improve some features and uh, maybe add some payments, and hopefully we can launch this in a few months. And I worked on this with uh, Christine, Laura, and uh, Ariane, and yeah, so that was our product. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kaiser. Uh, now, after this piece of shit of a summer, actually, I think many of us already are a little bit fed up, are maybe hoping for a warm September, but let's be honest, that is probably not going to happen. So you gotta brace yourself, winter is coming. And what better way is there than just huddled up with a nice cozy blanket on your couch reading a good book. Give it up for Will. Thank you, everybody. I don't know why nobody sat on this comfortable couch, but welcome to 101 with William. <laughs> All right. So people read for many reasons, as you can see. Um, they read to gain knowledge, to understand thyself, or you know, to enlarge your world, or simply just to pass time. And what, um, what the Book Collective does is that we provide an incredible platform for book lovers to share their books online so you and others could read and borrow these books anywhere in the world, wherever you are located. So I immediately land on this modish and minimalistic design homepage, <laughs> in inspired by the design of a book, which usually you will see it's 2D, it's very clean, and it's effortless to navigate. I can scroll and I'll see the featured books listed and some of the featured libraries where our users have carefully curated and have their own collections of books stored inside these libraries. If you click on the carousel, you can even look at the individual books that are inside these libraries. Now, I want to read a good book this week, but none of these books seems to pique my interest, so I'm going to go ahead and search for one. And as a notorious book reader, one of my favorite genres is science fiction. So I'm going to look for that. We're in Berlin. I'm going to go ahead and click on search. And then it shows me a, a related results of all the books that are related to science fiction. And from here, you can sort it by title, by author, by rating, etc. And you can see all the book specs displayed conveniently here in the description box. Actually, I will be going to, actually I'll be traveling to Paris this weekend. Um, and you know, I wanna see if there are any science fiction books there. And this book collective is great because all I have to do is change the location and it refines the results right for me, all done right here from the search bar. Now, I'm going to look at the first result, Around the World in 80 Days. I've never read the book. I know it's a good book, and it is in Paris, which where I'll be this weekend. And the review seems OK, but let's go check out the book. We'll click on the book, and a few short descriptions of the book. I scroll down, look at some of the reviews. You know, a right experience. The book's a little crusty. You know, the book was soft cover. I love soft cover books. This is just one I have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and request to book his book, to borrow his book. I put in the dates, I'm going to put in the dates, and what is really nice is I can send a private message to the book owner saying, hey, I want to read your book, or you know, something of a personal touch. It's, it's a truly personal experience and a very interactive one that you can get. And I click on send message, and now my request is sent with a confirmation date, and it's that simple. Now one of my favorite features of the book collective is that it makes managing reservations and requests very straightforward. I'm gonna show you how. It's all done through the dashboard. So go ahead and take me to my dashboard. All right, now I'm at my dashboard. You can see, you can take advantage of this interface where it shows you my libraries, um, my you can see my messages, and you can see that I already have a few libraries of my own that I've curated. And I do remember I have a pending request for one of my books that I haven't yet accepted. So I'm gonna go check that out. I click on my books, and you can see Ailey wants to borrow Lord of the Rings, which is one of my favorite books, and he left a nice message. 
Um, but before I confirm that, I want to specify some few further instructions so I can click on the conversation I have with him. And it brings me to this chat room where I can exchange private messages about the transaction for the book. I'm going to tell, ask Ailey if he can pick up you know, in the AM. So we say, hey, pick up in the AM. And this creates a sense of immediacy. That is what everybody wants from any app, is this immediate experience. That's why everybody has a phone now. And there you go. My request is sent. I'm going to confirm the request. And now the book is ready for him to pick up. See, as an active member of the book collective, I've already curated a few of my own libraries, as you can see from my dashboard. And I thought it'd be cool to demonstrate today how I can lend a book to the world. I brought a book that I recently read. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Lend a Book. The Book Collective makes it really easy for me to lend books to the platform. I can either do it manually by hand, or I can do it by ISBN. So for those of you who don't know, ISBN is short for ISBN. <laughs> and you can look at uh, the number is usually found in the first few pages of the book uh, underneath publisher. Sorry, the mic. And, and it's underneath the publisher with the barcode. <laughs> underneath the publisher. And it's usually a 13-digit number, either in the front or in the back. I think this time it's in the back. And I just have to click on search, and it shows me the variety of matching results that are of this book. As you can see, Small is Beautiful, which is the book that I just have. All I have to do is select the correct book. And with one tap, it automatically populates the book details for you. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> so now I get the option to either add it to a library or I can create a new one. But since I already have libraries of my own, I'm going to go ahead and select um, Rewind. Uh, one of my libraries that I really like to read on, on a cloudy day in Berlin. And now you can see it's been added to my library Rewind right there with this beautiful book cover all set up for me without me having to do anything. So there you have it. The page is simple to navigate, managing requests and reservation, super hands-on, a true peer-to-peer -peer platform dedicated to all you book lovers. And now you can read on. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Will. Um, now, for those of you who actually are already in their mind planning, OK, man, I can get through so many books this winter, I have bad news for you. At some point, this gets a little boring. And you, every once in a while, probably want to go out with your friends and do something. But what are you going to do? Give it up for Stephanie. Thanks, Philip. That's uh, definitely an excellent question. So to get started, um, we're going to have a little bit of audience participation. One of my favorite things. Don't worry, no one's going to be called out. So if everyone can raise their hand. Up, up, up. All right, put your hand down if you've ever played trivia in a bar. Wow, that was a lot of you. OK. Put your hand down if you've ever seen live music in a bar. OK, well, you guys might need to get out a bit more, but that's fine. So we're going to transition a little. Let me tell you about myself. Basically, I'm from New York. As we can see, I'm somewhere between the ages of you know, 25 to 35. <laughs> Before this, I worked in marketing, your normal 9 to 5 job, which means I'm a bit too young where I don't yet have kids I have to take care of at night, but I'm a bit too old where it's not really appropriate after work to just go to the bar, get drunk, spend all night there. So I'll give you an example. About a year ago, um, I met up with my best friend, Zena, in New York. Now, we're really, really indecisive people. That is genuinely true. So we decided we we're going to go meet at a bar, and then at that bar, we decide what we wanted to do. We decided on trivia. Now, if you ever try and Google where is trivia happening now, um, it's really, really hard. 
okay? We spent an hour there drinking to find where we wanted to drink. So let's try and reimagine this situation a little, how it could have been much easier if I had something like this wonderful platform called After Five. And for anyone that needs a European translation, that would be after 17 o'clock, I think. <laughs> so in this scenario, it's middle of the day, around like three o'clock, I've been working, I'm getting kind of bored, so I start thinking about what I'll be doing later tonight. And I happen upon this wonderful website. September 12th, let's all imagine, let's transport ourselves forward a little bit. So I'm gonna go to my search, and I'm going to select September 12th. I wanna see what's going on. As I've said, I'm really indecisive, so I definitely kinda need to get some ideas. All right, trivia, poetry reading, always interesting to do while drinking. You know, it's been a tough week. My manager has been hard on me, so I need to laugh a little. I'm thinking comedy. So I'm gonna return to my search and refine it a little. Search for comedy. Wow, that's, that's a really great search, guys. <laughs> so we've got two locations uh, that are in Berlin. Now I notice one of them, Friedrich, and Friedrichsen. I live there, by the way, but I still haven't been able to figure out how to pronounce it, so let's just ignore that. That is a perfect location for me. I don't really have to go far. I get home early. That way I'm not hungover at all, totally ready for work the next day. So, it says greatest comedy show ever. That sounds super convincing. Um, let's check out the details a bit. Oh, okay, seven to nine, again, a good hour. Too old to be out all night. Hannibal Burris, if you don't know, he's a great comedian. It's really hard to see him for free, all right? So that is definitely a big deal. Oh, and I, uh, I happen to like that bar. Only one euro sign, which is great, because I don't have a ton of money. All right, so basically, uh, Obviously, I'm not going to go alone. That would be a little awkward. So I'm going to choose from one of my icons. Maybe I'll share this if we scroll down on the page a bit. On Twitter or Facebook, probably email for me personally, because honestly, I don't need everyone to know what I'm doing that night. I'm going to send it to my friend, Zena. She obviously says, oh my god, great idea. I'm not going to do laundry tonight. I'm going to go with you. We go, meet up, laugh, drink go home. Now, as a responsible bar goer, um, clearly I must share with others whether it was good or bad. Did I waste two hours of my life or not? So I'm going to write a review. Yeah. Okay, well, great comedy. Definitely recommend it. Deaf, wow, hmm, getting cooler. <laughs> Rating, you know, the service was a little slow. So we'll give it two, wow, four, I think. We're not that harsh. And uh, we're gonna add our review, you know, doing our responsibility, letting other people decide should they go there, should they not. So as we can see, we've basically found a very, very easy way to search for local events. Right? Not the kind where, oh, I'm going to go buy my Broadway tickets, spend 50 bucks. No. What's happening around the corner? What bar is having live music? Something, right now, it's more walk by and maybe you'll see it. But what about the other side? Who else is this so clearly helping? Let's think about the bar owners, crucial people in all of our lives. Now, for your average bar, it's not like they have a marketing team, right? Some of them don't even have a website. Very sad. So they need an easy way to list what's going on. So I went to the comedy show. It was amazing. And I'm going to leave my job now and start my own bar. First thing I have to do is list it. So I'm going to go to my profile. And I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to add my bar. It's called uh, Le Vagon Bar. It's kind of for a more nerdy clientele. It's located in the general Berlin area because I don't really know any street names here yet. Um, code and drink. 
Yep. And uh, the website, I, I think you know that one, Boris, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guys, it's like with no skills at all, I actually have my own page. But sadly, if we look at upcoming events, there's nothing going on. Um, that's not fun. So let's go back up to profile for a moment. Now we're going to add our first event. We obviously, we're new, we need to get traffic, there's a lot of competition in this city, so we'll call this one um, Cocktails and Code. <laughs> it's a great way to learn, I highly recommend it. Bar, oh, <laughs> it already knows, that's so great. <laughs> Category, education, this is for education, so we don't need to feel guilty, we can go after work. Description, learn Ruby, really useful guys, really useful. Okay. Obviously, my uh, lovely assistant isn't the best listener, but that's okay. <laughs> Date, um, you know, it's a, it's a Thursday kind of thing. It's not for Friday night, so uh, let's pick a Friday, maybe the 22nd. Uh, sorry, I mean a Thursday, the 21st. 7.30 to 9.30, we have jobs, okay? We can't stay out that late. And now let's add it. Wow. I'm already starting to publicize, gain traffic, and, you know, help people drink and learn at the same time. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Loving it. Uh, I think if you don't open up, up that bar up in the next two weeks, we're going to claim that name, by the way. Uh, we already realized that most of you are not born and raised in Berlin. But I'm really happy that you made the choice to move here. I was, by the way. Love this city. I've lived all over the world. And there is just nothing that compares to it. And we have quantified that. We can now show you where you should live. Give it up for Vidika. Uh, hi guys, I'm Vivica, and I'm a freshly minted developer at Le Wagon. That's my best French accent. Um, and in the last nine weeks, I've learned how to code, and I've learned how to think like a software engineer. But I've actually learned the most from uh, the amazing Le Wagon community. Uh, they're motivated, they're energetic, and they're ambitious. And um, I'm at a bit of a crossroads in life right now. So I have offers to teach at uh, the different Le Wagon locations in Paris, Berlin, uh, and London. And uh, I really like the idea of staying back in Berlin. I'm feeling a little edgy, uh, more night outs in Kreuzberg, or moving to Paris and uh, lingering, lingering over a baguette at a Parisian cafe. But I want a more intelligent way to make the decision between Paris, London, and Berlin. Uh, I want a tool that understands me, that understands my preferences, and lets me uh, compare quality of life, uh, salaries, and other data. So a friend told me I had to check out Lucid. Uh, so here we are on the Lucid homepage. And I'm going to start off by comparing uh, Paris and London. Uh, I need about a thousand euros to comfortably live in Paris, and since I'm all ready to join the working world, I'm going to select worker here. So let's compare and see what Lucid says. Uh, so straight up, I can see that Lucid uh, recommends Paris over Berlin, uh, and I'm curious. Show me more, Lucid. Oh, cool. So it looks like Paris and London are almost identical in uh, quality of life and cost of living except for one crucial difference. It's a lot cheaper to live in Paris than it is in London. And they're generous at Le Wagon, but not that generous. So uh, that, makes a, that makes a big difference to me. And here, Lucid gives me a critical piece of information. So uh, for the 1,000 euros that I spend to live in Paris, I need 1,120 euros, which is uh, greater than 1,000 euros to live in London. So I'm curious to see what else Lucid offers. 
and I f this is where I feel like Lucid really understands me and understands what's important to me as a worker. So um, I can see that Paris is significantly less English speaking than London. Um, and, uh, but I feel up to the challenge. I feel up to going from bonjour to French fluency uh, in a couple of months. And I also uh, can see that Paris, uh, it's much easier to find a place to rent in Paris than London. Uh, all of us have been through the nightmare of finding a place to live in a big city. And it's not, it's not a particularly memorable experience. So when I go, uh, when I explore Luce, Lucid even more, I can see that Lucid actually breaks down the cost of everyday life. Um, and I'm a huge movie buff, so I want to spend my uh, weekends de-stressing from teaching at the cinema. And I can see that a ticket costs 13 euros in London versus 10 euros in Paris. Uh, and I also want, will need to get an apartment close to the city centre. So uh, that's about 1,800 euros in London, which is completely cost prohibitive for me. That doesn't work for my budget. And actually, when I, upon further reflection, I realize that uh, it's a little too ambitious to learn French in a couple of months. And I want to uh, maybe compare Paris to Berlin or another English-speaking city. So I go back to the home page. Uh, I go from Paris to Berlin, uh, still need a thousand euros to comfortably live in Berlin. Worker still best describes me, and I want to compare and see what Lucid says this time. Ah, uh, that, wait, that's interesting. So it looks like Berlin is the better fit for me, according to Lucid. So I'm curious to know what changed here. And uh, looking at these graphs, it looks like Berlin has a better quality of life than Paris. Uh, since I'm working abroad, uh, safety and life quality are actually important to me. And unsurprisingly, Berlin is cheaper than Paris in almost every regard. Uh, and I'm going to see what else Lucid has to offer here. Uh, so Berlin is significantly more English speaking uh, than Paris. And I feel good about that. I feel comfortable and excited to make new English speaking friends. Um, and uh, Berlin, it's also much cheaper, uh, sorry, much easier to rent in Berlin than it is in Paris. And going down uh, even more, comparing the cost of items. Um, so I have a caffeine addiction, so I'm curious to see the cost of a cappuccino. And it's 3.5 euros in Paris. So that's completely going to break the bank for me. And a deal breaker is <laughs> not going to work. And I also compare uh, the cost of living. It's uh, only 700 euros in Paris, uh, sorry, in Berlin per month on average versus uh, nearly 1,100 euros per month on average. So uh, overall, I agree with Lucid's recommendation. Berlin definitely seems like the better fit. Um, and I'm ready to make it Facebook official now. So I go down and uh, I make a Facebook post Hey guys, <laughs> hey guys, I'm moving to Berlin, come visit me. Great. <laughs> yes, so I posted it on Facebook and we're live at lucid.guide, come check us out. See, I told you, Berlin is the place to be. Um, now, I'm really glad that so many of you made their way down here uh, on a Friday night. That's quite impressive. And of course, our students are really happy as well. But what happens tomorrow? What happens tomorrow after the hangover? Well, Moritz can tell you. Hi. So, hey everyone, my name is Moritz, and I had a super busy week coding all day, all night, and I forgot one big thing, making plans for tonight. So, my usual approach is to say, okay, I'm going on WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, message my friends, um, but the big problem is, it's a lot of back and forth, discussions. It's, it's kind of slow, not really fun. So I found this cool web app called Got Time. 
and what their approach is they want to let you meet friends spontaneously again. So when we go through the website, 3 p.m., just woke up with a hangover cake now, that's probably me tomorrow, I can relate to that. And also Friday, forgot to make party plans. Yeah, that's also me, so it seems it's perfect for me, so I sign up with Facebook. And the first step is to add a plan or to add a suggestion. And for me, it's in one hour because I need some food before. And okay, it's cool swiping animation. Um, do the party emoji. So I see that some Facebook friends of mine already listed some suggestions. And I have Killian in one hour. Let's see. Okay, he wants to listen to music, uh, which is chill and cool and whatsoever, but it's not party, so boring, bye. Um, and Elise wants to go for food in four hours. I'm starving till then, so also bye. Um, get, and John wants to go for biking tomorrow morning. I have a hangover. Oh, I got a text message. Nice. Okay. Hi, Frederica. You and Marge are meeting plus one hour for party. See details and chat at. Okay. Click the link. That sounds awesome. Okay. We got a match. So let's write something. All we party. Okay. <laughs> yes. So um, I think it would be a good idea because partying with two people is nice, but partying with everyone is much better that we should invite the rest of the community here. So let's invite everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, actually, ladies and gentlemen, that was it for the night. Before we finish, um, First of all, a big shout out to the place here for hosting us. Thank you very much to Celine, Tom and Svetka. I love this place, the place. Moreover, I love every single one of the amazing teachers of the amazing TAs, namely Andy, Lars, Hugo, Erin, Clement, Pauline, Gina, Cecile, Daniel, Boris, Alice, Francesco, Amanda, Spencer, and Cyril, thank you very much. Without you, these nine weeks wouldn't have been possible. <laughs> so, there is nothing left to say for me, but have a great evening. Enjoy some more beer. We have beer in the fridge. We should have beer at the bar. Just have a good time, and it's great that you all could make it. Cheers! Yeah. <laughs>